Hi there, I'm Onyx Ayako, an Applications Engineer with the Battery Management Solutions Group here at Texas Instruments. Today, we're going to be showcasing the BQ76940 Microcontroller Controlled Analog Front End Devices. The BQ76940 family consists of three flexible battery monitoring assets sharing a common simple digital interface and based on a single hardware platform. This family gives you the latest management solutions for 10.8 volts to 48 volt battery applications offering unique value optimized monitoring of up to 15 lithium ion or phosphate cells with built-in hardware protection. The BQ76940 family consists of three products. The 20-pin BQ76920, the 30-pin BQ76930, and the greatest of them all, which is the 44-pin BQ76940. The BQ76920 supports 3 to 5 cells, and it is used in applications needing 10.8 volts to 18 volts. The BQ76930 supports 6 to 10 cells for applications ranging from 24 volts up to 36 volts, while the BQ76940 supports 9 to 15 cells for 36 volt to 48 volt applications. The block diagram here shows our experimental setup. We've got the EV2300, which is used as an interface for connecting the computer with the EVM. If you do not have a battery pack, you can simulate cells using a power supply and turning on the switch shown here, which enables the onboard resistor ladder, thus mimicking the performance of a battery pack. We are going to press the boot switch to wake the device up from shutdown mode and place the jumper shown here since we'll be using an EV2300. For the purpose of our experiment today, we're not going to be using a microcontroller, but rather a graphical user interface TI has provided in order to be able to communicate with the evaluation model. The graphical user interface looks like this. And over here, we've got the register screen, which shows the control, status, and data register values. We've got the I2C screen, which facilitates the reading and writing tool of sequential registers. And the sequence screen, useful for reading or sending time sequences of register writes or reads to the device. Over here, we've got a byte communication tool, useful for reading or writing to a register. This section over here gets to show the cell voltages, the stack voltage, the temperature sensors, as well as the Coulomb counter measurements. Now let's move over to the experimental setup for this device. Right over here, you've got the BQ76920 EVM. This is what it looks like. But for the purposes of our experiment today, we are going to be using the evaluation model for the BQ76940. Right over here, as you can see, you've got the IC. Over here, you've got the switch for toggling between either using a battery pack or using the resistor string. For our experiment today, we are going to be using the resistor string and a power supply to simulate actual cells. Over here, you've got the power supply connection. Over here, you've got the load connection. And I also have um, scope probes connected to the charge and discharge fed gate drives. Right over here, you've got the button for waking the device up from shutdown mode. And over here, you've got the EV2300 for interfacing the evaluation model with the computer. For this experiment today, we're going to apply 44 volts to the device. We've got all 15 cells connected, so that's going to be approximately 2.9 volts on each cell. We are going to move over to the GUI to see how this translates over there. Over here you can see that the voltages of the cells are about 2.94 volts and the stack voltage is about 44 volts which is the volt which I applied by using the power supply. You can see the red highlighted section over here indicating that the charge and discharge effects are turned on. And we can see that the device is actually being scanned right now, indicating that the GUI is communicating with the EVM. Now, we're going to test the current measuring capability of the Coulomb counter of the device. I'm going to apply a load current of about 0.5 amps through the circuit on the EVM. As you can see here, the Coulomb counter measures about 0.5 millivolts, which corresponds to 0.5 amps, given that the EVM has a 1 milliohm sense resistor. Look, right now, we're going to test an undervoltage condition and see how the EVM or how the device reacts to it. We're going to apply a voltage lower than 37 volts, which is the threshold that has been programmed on the device. As you can see over here on the GUI, the discharge FET has 
turned off, protecting the circuit from the under voltage condition. The yellow trace indicates that the discharge pet has turned off. As you can see, the voltage being measured is about 80 millivolts. This is on the gate drive of the discharge pet. While the charge pet is still turned on, it's at about 11.8 volts. This concludes the demo of the BQ76940 AFE devices. For more information, don't forget to visit ti.com slash bmsindustrial. Thank you.